You are listening to the Love, Love and Money podcast, and today I have a very special guest. Andre, thank you for being on the show. Uh, no problem, Shakira. Appreciate you having me. Okay, Andre, I'd like to start off by having you tell us who you are and what do you do. Um, my name is Andre Haynes. I am a real estate investor, entrepreneur, um, author, content creator. Um, I'm a dad, um, I'm a mentor, uh, educator, uh, just a lot of different things. <laughs> okay. Um, Andre, what is your background where, and where did you come from? Um, I come from the south side of Chicago, the I.B. Wells Projects. Um, I was adopted when I was six years old um, into my own family. Thank God for that. I moved with my aunt into the suburbs in uh, Maywood. Okay for a Broadview area. And um, from there, um, that's kind of like where I grew up from the ages of like 18. And um, that's where like, um, you know, in that neighborhood and area is kind of like where I met all my friends and kind of like established like, you know, my relationships and who I was going to be uh, throughout those years. Okay, that's an interesting background. Um. Andres, what inspired you to uh, make a change as far as your mindset? You faded out real quick. I couldn't hear you. What'd you say? Uh, what inspired you to make a change as far as your mindset? Um, I mean, so coming from where I come from, the project, like, that just like ain't like a normal thing to just you know be just thinking about you know generational wealth um understanding um you know the power of your mind and words just like all of these different things um that i've learned in the financial literacy space and just like the mindset space um typically you know it's a lot of you know drugs violence game banging just like all of that kind of stuff and um, I had to essentially go through a whole lot of stuff in my life from, like I say, that age to the time I was probably 27 years old. And um, at that point, I, I got to like, when I hit rock bottom and, I, um, you know, figure out what I was going to do next, because I had been pursuing a music dream for a very long time. So from the time I was probably 16 to the time I was probably like 28. I had pursued music and um, just was not successful at it. I, I had what would be considered local success songs on the radio, different things like that. I would do shows, I would meet with labels, all of those things, but I never signed and never like, you know, like just blew up like how I thought I would or should. And um, there were a lot of things that I was doing that weren't like necessarily right, but I would, you know, still portray an image as if I had it like, you know what I'm saying, popping, you know what I mean? Like I had money, you know what I mean? I would, you know what I mean just like it just did not match up with my role and um after a while um shit started to pile up excuse my language bills um expenses debt rent all of that stuff child support and I had to really like you know corral myself and bring myself back in and um have a conversation with myself and be like dude like is this really how you want your life to be or are you you know what I mean you gonna make some changes so I had to kind of like step away from the music industry because it wasn't serving me or paying me and kind of reevaluate my process and my life. And um, that's kind of like where I had to start over and went and got a job. Reading everything, like, well, my life changed. And that's when I said, I've now come. Okay. This is a good, this is a good interview. It's too bad this Wi Fi signal ain't working out. <laughs> but, but Andre, you seem you seem real young, so I'm proud of you because like I don't think I, I didn't care about money um like around your age. Do you mind sharing your age? I'm not that young though. Okay. You don't you don't have to, but I you look like it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um yeah. what kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't look like this. I'm 38 years old, like I said, I've been through a lot. And, uh, I've just had a lot of experiences in my life. Like when people talk to me or like I start having conversations with people, a lot of times people are like, dude, you live like 
five or six different lives in this one life. And it's like, yeah, I've, I've gone through a lot. Like, you know what I mean? Like I said, I used to rap and I wasn't just like a local rapper. I would do big shows with like, you know what I mean? Fat Joe and open up for like big artists at the time, like Young Jock and just like all of these different people that I would be around, T.I., um, Jay-Z and Beyond. Like a lot, like I and my friends played in the NBA, so I would be around people like Kobe and LeBron, um, just like Shaq, just like a couple of my friends went to the NBA. So like I was exposed to a lot really young. So I always had like a thought process that I could make it, but I saw a lot young. Um, I just really had to, you know, you know figure it out more than Okay. So you was interested in being a rapper? I was a rapper. I wasn't interested in it. I was a rapper. Like I had songs on the radio. I was doing music videos, all of that in my in my twenties. Yeah, like I was heavy on the music scene in Chicago, doing every single show. Like I said, I was traveling around doing shows, like meeting with record labels, trying to get deals, all kind of stuff. Yeah. Do you still have that interest in you? Rapping? No. Um, okay. <laughs> I, um, I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still talented, and I write like you know what I mean, like with my content. I write scripts and different stuff like that, and um, just different concepts, different ideas. I have but as far as like music, no. You ask me about it all the time, though. Um, I still like go through my hard drive, and sometimes I listen to some of my old music. I was really talented. Like I wouldn't just like. You know, like you hear people like, yeah, I'm a rapper, then you hear their music, like, bro, like, no, like, I was spending a lot of time on production. I spent a lot of time just my music mixed and mastered in order to get it to the radio. Like, I was really trying to, like, like take off and go crazy in the music industry. Like, I had a whole album done, everything just got shutting doors on my face. Like, that wasn't the path for me. So, okay. like, you know, when I got on the right path, that's when everything started working out for me, like in real estate and stuff. Okay. Okay. So, Andre, um, what is your net worth? And you don't have to share if it if this if you don't want to. Um uh, <laughs> uh, it's around two, two M's. <laughs> Currently, yeah, it's around two M's. I'm working on some other stuff so I can go a little higher, but right now as is it's about two million. Um, can you tell us about the book that you wrote? Um, my book is called Renaissance's Five Step Guide on Getting Your Shit Together. Again, excuse my language, but that's the title of the book. Um, it is a pretty much uh, a, a very brief read, about 50 pages. Um, and it's a, you know, five step blueprint pretty much that I use to kind of like get my life in order, starting with, you know, step one, which is the process of like self evaluation, understanding like your own way of understanding is coming to say understanding that everything that you is what got you to where you are right now. And if you want to get to better places and elevate to higher levels in your life, you have to start that now. Like if you have a plan to be somewhere in five years, you have to start that process now. You have to start putting in the work for that now. I always tell people, you don't eat the fruit the same day you plant the seed. So if you plan on having something or attaining something, you better start working on it now because it's going to take some time for that thing to grow and blossom into what it's supposed to be. Okay. So Andre, um, did you have a plan and how did you get to this net worth? Um, I had a plan. I wrote down a plan in my um in my work cubicle back in like 2010. I told myself, you know, I was gonna have a million dollars um worth assets two and twenty-nine I but I eclipsed that shit. Excuse my language again. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, I eclipsed it in probably two years. Like, you know what I mean? I um, I hit that mark in 2018. So 10 years, 11 years earlier than what I planned on hitting Wait, that how, mark. And I hit that mark. How long did it, in real estate. How long did it take to get to the first? I'm just kidding. No, so so essentially what happened was I bought my first property um, and that property has gone up in value um, and it's worth about $700,000 now. And then I got my second property and that property was a million dollar property that's also going up in value. So combined, they in total are worth about $2 million on top of them generating cash flow every month from the rental. Um, how, did you, how did you get started in the state? Um, I went through a program called NACA. 
Neighborhood Assistance Corporations of America, where I bought my first four unit with no money down. Um, I kept all things that I saved throughout the process, and I even walked away from the closing table without the check. Uh, you know, go and invest some money into the stock market. Then later on, a few years later, I helped my ex girlfriend do the same thing with some of those funds that I had put in the stock market, and um. Just kind of like random play that way. And um, it allowed me to, like I say, not even really ever have to use any of my own money um, to purchase real estate. Because like I say, the second property was purchased with money that I invested in the stock market and had going up. So I had took the property from the stock market and used it to invest in that second property. And um, I mean, free more than anything, um, I have time, time to do what I want to do, go where I want to go, kind of like do the things I want. And um, the NACA program has set me up to do that. And it's really cool because they pay for your agent, your closing costs, um, your attorney. There are no fees like how most um, loans and uh, mortgages have different fees and stuff baked in. Um, it's a really, really good program for first time home buyers. It's amazing, actually. OK. So for people who don't trust NACA, what would you tell them? You say for people who don't what? Don't trust NACA or are not aware of NACA. Uh, trust. Go, go in the, um, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars in closing costs somewhere. Then you that's <laughs> and then um for people who don't know about it, man, I think you go check it out. Uh, people who don't know about it, I think that you go check it out. Um www.naca.com. Or you can book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me and I can give you a little bit more detail about it and give you the plays that I run and teach you how to do what I did with the NACA program. Um, yeah, but yeah, just do some research. You know what I mean? And if you, you know, like I said, don't like it or you feel a type of way about the NACA program, man, feel free to go another route, FHA, conventional, however, and put that 3%, 5%, 10%, 20% down. And I promise to God, once you see those closing cost numbers, you're going to come running back to NACA. Okay. Um, Andre, can you talk about some of your sources of income and which one freed you from your job? Um, real estate freed from my job, my rentals. And um, from there, I was able to um, have the time to create more streams of income, whether it be my apparel line, um, whether it be my book, whether it be like my consultations, my courses. Um, so yeah, I have a few different streams of income. I even do peer space as well, where I pretty much rent out my, um, one of my, uh, units, which is a house to people who want to do videos, photos, um, host dinner parties, different things like that. Um, so I've been to the time that I was putting in some job that eight, nine, 10 hours every day. And um, use that time and create different streams um, that now uh, surpass what I was making at my job, probably times four or five. Okay. Yeah, I heard about peer space. So you like peer space? Yeah, I do. Um, peer space is, is essentially easy money because what happens with peer space is um, even if you don't own a property and it's a place that you're renting, you can still rent out that place if you're comfortable with having people in your place um and and make extra money everybody's not comfortable with it everybody's not okay with it but you know me i see the money making opportunity and it's probably a little bit easier for me because i'm a guy and i'm just like not like a, you know a scary guy like you know what i mean i come from like the, the project so it's like it ain't a lot of stuff that scared me or make me like fearful so i don't mind having people in my house as long as they being professional and doing what they supposed to do um, you know, a lot of people will be concerned about what if they break in your house and come back, et cetera. It's like, man, mm -hmm. if you're concerned about all negative, bad stuff, you ain't gonna never make no money because like it's gonna be cons to everything, but they're also pros. And I'm also focused on the pros and the cons and I worry about the cons when they get there. And I also prepare for the cons so I'm not like left like in the cold when something bad does happen. Okay. Um, Andre, could you talk about... Um one of your sources, e-commerce. Uh, if, um, if somebody was just starting to get into e-commerce, um, how would they get started? Um, 
um if you wanted to get into e-commerce you can do it by um the easiest way would not without spending a whole lot of money would probably be um drop shipping and that's where essentially you find a product and um you middleman a product so you find somebody who's wholesaling a product um you know you put your put your you know your stamp or your label or your logo or whatever on that product or you don't even have to put a logo or whatever on it you could just sell the product for a higher price at your particular store so for example let's say you go to costco right and you go to costco and you're like hey guys i have a website set up that you know what i mean they do auto shipping or whatever the case may be and i'm going to be selling your products or whatever the case may be and costco sells let's say t-shirts for five dollars or whatever the case may be all right now you set your system up let's say shopify to costco system to you know what i mean buy costco shirts for five dollars but in your system on shopify you're selling that shirt with your logo etc on it for ten dollars so whole time you're not having boxes of t-shirts etc in your house essentially like i said you're just middleman and so a customer will go to your shopify website order one of your t-shirts your website will trigger the order to go into Costco. Costco will ship that order out to your customer. You get the $5 that was made in profit. You send Costco their $5 for the shirt. And now you're in business without ever having to spend any money for real. It doesn't necessarily go like that per se, but that's just an example of drop shipping works. And um, you can do shipping with a lot of different products, whether it be jewelry, makeup, clothes. Um, it's a lot of different products that you can do drop shipping with. Or you can, like I say, set up a Shopify, your website, whatever you want to do, um, and go out and buy you some some products in bulk and start selling like that. Um, there are a few different ways that you can do e-commerce. But more than anything, once you do get your product, you also have to market yourself, which is a major thing, because how else are people going to know about you and buy stuff from you if you're not marketing yourself and you're not putting it in their face? Um, so those are two major things. Um, and you have to understand in business and in e-commerce, if something isn't working right away, doesn't mean it won't work at all. You got to like keep on pressing and keep on pushing and just like keep on branding yourself and figuring out what's working in your particular market. It may cost you money to go to some, you know what I mean, um, some conventions or some seminars. You may have to pay for some mentorship. You may have to pay to market yourself, Facebook ads and different things like that, because organic reach nowadays is really, really slow with this whole um, Apple and Facebook battle of uh, privacy and all of that kind of stuff. So you may have to do some marketing, Google ads, emails, all of that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, um, you got to keep pressing and keep going and believe in your product, because if you don't, then nobody will. And um, as far as e-commerce goes, there are so many different products you can sell. I would suggest you figuring out what product you want to sell, learning as much as you can about that product, and then kind of like going from there and, you know what I mean, figuring out how to start a business with that product. Okay. Andre, what advice would you give to a brand new person who wants to have a $2 million network? Uh, start learning as much as you can. That's what I did. I didn't just get into this like, yeah, I'm gonna have a $2 million net worth. I wrote down everything that I wanted to do. And then what I started to do was write down short term goals on how I can get to that. So I would say like, yeah, I'm gonna have a million dollars by January of 2029. The first thing I needed to do uh, in that process this will start to learn how to get a million dollars like okay what out here can generate me a million dollars i'm past the age of being an athlete i'm not going to school so i can be no actor or none of that kind of stuff what other options do i have i kept reading and looking up what i had i kept some house entrepreneurship real estate and the stock. those are the things that can people a million dollars and people rich out here so all right cool now I got to pick one. What's the first thing I'm going to do? Real estate. Real estate is solid. Real estate gives me a place to live. Real estate eliminates my biggest expense, which is my rent. And if I eliminate my rent or my mortgage, that frees up funds that I'm working for for me to go invest into my own business now. So now I have my real estate and my foundation. I have a free place to live. That takes care of me and takes care of itself. So now I can take this $30,000, $40,000, $50,000 a year that I get at my job. And I can go and I can invest into myself and my business and whatever product that is. And from there, you just go and you learn as much as you can. Like I say, you invest in yourself, you buy 
courses, you buy books, you go to seminars, you pay for mentorships. Education is going to be your best friend. And it's because at the end of the day, if you're not educated and you don't know how to do this stuff, you can't make money. So the best thing to spend money on learning how to make money. You know what I mean? Um, and I think a lot of people try to skip that part and think they're going to get rich off of their friends and their family when that's not the case. You have to learn how to market to strangers and sell your products to strangers and draw the attention of strangers. Okay. Hey, Andre, what is your favorite book or some book recommendations? Uh, my favorite book is Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, as far as like a business book. Um, I have another book that I really love as far as money. It's Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins. Then I have another book um, that's just more so about spirituality, which is the seven spiritual habits of highly effective people. Okay. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. The seven spiritual laws of success. I, that's okay. the seven spiritual laws of success. That's what it is. And um, those are my three favorites in, uh, in those particular subjects. Okay. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, but the other two I need to check out. So. You uh -huh. probably like them a lot. <laughs> okay, so Andre, I'm gonna switch over to love. It's love and money show. So, are you single or married? Okay. I'm currently single. Yeah, I was in a long term relationship, and then it, it, and I've been single. Okay, Andre, can you tell us something you learned about love as it relates to money that can help somebody else? Um, working together always. Like when you and your partner, like, you know, work together and help each other. It works better that way. When y'all separated and doing y'all own thing, it's not as beneficial and it's not as lucrative. But when y'all like are actually like working together and helping each other build something, it's way more lucrative that way. Okay. Um, then the last question, Andre. Where can people go to find you if they want to learn more and where can people get your book? I am at Renaissance125. That's R-E-N-A-I-S-S-A-N-C-E-125 across all social media platforms. That's Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, you name it. That's where you'll be able to find me at. And you can get my book off my website, www.therenaissanceu.com in my shop, or you can click the link in my Instagram bio, and um, you can get it there. You can um, check out all of my content there, um, my merchandise, courses, all of the free stuff that I give out. Like, just everything is in the link in my bio on my Instagram page and on my website. Okay. Sounds good, Andre. Thank you for being on the show and sharing your story. Oh, no problem. Anytime. Appreciate y'all for having me.